This is a short video on acquired demyelinating diseases. I wanted to differentiate these demyelinating diseases from demyelinating diseases that might be present from birth or congenital or hereditary demyelinating diseases. While these five diseases might have some genetic component involved with them, they are usually presenting later in life and are usually not present at birth. So these are non-hereditary diseases in which normally formed myelin degenerates as a result of insult on the myelin or insult on the oligodendrocytes where the exons are preserved. And that's an important distinction for demyelination. The exons underlying the myelin are still working. It's a problem with the myelin or the oligodendrites supporting the myelin. So let's begin with the first one, multiple sclerosis. This is the most common central nervous system disorder, most common demyelination disorder in young adults, usually presents in youngish adults, 2030s, and uh, it prevalence is up to one in 1,000, so, so not too rare. MS has perivascular inflammation. <clears throat> so on histology, you're going to see inflammation, you're going to see demyelination around the blood vessels. There are both acute and chronic lesions, and in a given patient with MS, you might see both of these at the same time. So MS has been described as polyphasic. The acute lesions are the loss of the oligodendrocytes, the loss of the myelin. Uh, around that missing myelin, you also see reactive astrocytes and macrophages infiltrating the scene. The chronic lesions in MS are fibrous astrocyte gliosis. Now, remember, this is kind of the scar tissue of the central nervous system. This is uh, the body's reaction, the body's, uh, the body's deposition of glial cells in response to inflammation. MS is diagnosed with MRI, where you see uh, white patches, where you see sclerotic spots on MRI, and more definitively with the oligoclonal IgG bands in the CSF. And this is what tells us that there is some kind of immune component to MS, just like there is in many other diseases. It's important to note that when you see these oligoclonal IgG bands in the CSF of a patient with MS, you will not find these same antibodies in the serum, only in the CSF. And on the right here, you can see some of the abundant neutrophils and macrophages infiltrating where the myelin is missing. And it might not be so obvious here, but there is no myelin in the top left of that image. You can kind of see a diagonal line that's kind of, uh, that's kind of delineating where the, the sclerotic region is. And the top left is missing myelin, and it has a bunch of inflammatory cells invading. There's a distinct lesion edge, and we just mentioned that. We just talked about that in that image. Next, we have ADEM, acute disseminated encephalomyelitis. This is a mimic of multiple sclerosis. There's a group of diseases called borderline forms of multiple sclerosis. This is one of them, ADEM. So we're going to kind of talk about this one and talk about how we can differentiate it from multiple sclerosis. This disease is thought to follow viral infections, such as the flu, such as uh, some of the viruses in the MMR vaccine, like, like mumps and rubella, and herpes infections as well. This one also has perivenous inflammation, as we said with MS. So there's loss of white matter to the vessels. Histology here shows macrophages, not macrophages and neutrophils, just macrophages. One big differentiating feature between ADEM and MS is that ADEM is monophasic in its lesions. It's all of its lesions look as in they have as 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 if they have progressed in the same time scale. You don't have some acute and some chronic in the same patient. It's either all acute or all chronic. Next disease is progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, abbreviated PML. This is caused by specific viral agents. It's the JC virus. And it's uh, it's interesting to see that most people are infected with the JC, with, with the JC virus. I think it's somewhere like 80, 85 to 90% of people have positive serology for the JC virus. And the virus is uh, obviously kept pretty, pretty under, under pretty good control in most people. So PML is really a complication for people who are immunocompromised, where that virus is able to, to start up again, that, that virus is able to get active again. So we see it a lot in AIDS patients. Early stage of the disease shows multiple demyelination foci in the white matter. Later in the disease, you get necrotic lesions that can involve the cortex. So that's kind of how it progresses. On histology, a couple unique features. You see macrophages engulfing myelin debris, and there aren't many other white blood cells in uh, patient's histology with PML because they are immunocompromised when they have this disease. You also see large, bizarre, transformed astrocytes, and that's kind of a unique feature of PML.
worth looking up to see an image of those. You see enlarged oligodendro, sorry, you see enlarged oligodendroglial nuclei. So the oligodendrocytes have huge nuclei, and uh, that's uh, might be a deposition of the virus in those nuclei. It might be a viral inclusion that you're seeing on histology for that. So PML usually seen in immunocompromised patients caused by the JC virus, although it is in people with the HIV virus, people with AIDS, and uh, you see some unique features on histology. You see weird astrocytes and you see oligodendrocytes with large nuclei. Next is another disease associated with AIDS, this time caused by the AIDS virus alone, no other infections. This is called leukoencephalopathy associated with AIDS. We see perivascular giant cells, which are multinucleated, and these cells are producing, or these, these cells, you, you can sample these cells and, uh, and find HIV antigens. They release toxic cytokines, and the, people believe that these toxic cytokines play the role in the pathogenesis. These toxic cytokines are what are causing the leukoencephalopathy. This disease is, is associated with AIDS dementia, some of the mental disorders that, uh, that progress with AIDS. And on general imaging, on like CT or on MRI, you could see pallor of white cerebral matter, and that's kind of what's shown on the bottom there. On the left, we have what is a normal brain, whereas on the right, you see pallor of the cerebral white matter. You can see the white matter is really not as white as, uh, as, as it is in a normal brain, and that's due to leukoencephalopathy associated with AIDS. And that's what I just said down there. You, you see a normal CT of the brain on the left with a CT of a patient with AIDS on the right, and you can see cerebral white matter pallor. Lastly, we have central pontine myelinolysis. This is an iatrogenic disorder. Pathogenesis, we're gonna walk through the steps of what causes this and how it usually happens. Patients come in with chronic severe hyponatremia. This means they have low sodium. So if you have low sodium, sodium is usually outside the cells. So water is gonna rush from inside your cells to outside your cells. Body's gonna to react to that by, uh, by making adaptations that allow the cells to pump out other osmoles. So the cells don't want to uh, the, excuse me, the cells don't want to swell up too much because there's hyponatremia in the serum. So they're going to pump out other osmoles to make sure that they're kind of keeping the same volume that they should be keeping so that they don't cause any problems to the structural integrity of the cell. Patient comes in with this. Sometimes in the hospital, they're treated with saline to increase the serum tonicity. And if you're giving somebody whose cells have made this compensation saline, that's going to force all the water in their cells to rush out of the cell where the, to where the saline is. So it's going to pull more water out of the cell. The cells don't have time to compensate fast enough. And this is going to cause shearing of the myelin sheets. So the cells are going to shrink too much, too fast, and these are myelin cells that we're talking about, which can kind of shear the myelin off of the nerve sheaths. As I mentioned earlier, this central pontine myelinolysis is predominantly iatrogenic. It's caused by providers. And demyelination is the worst at the base of the pons. That's why it has its name, central pontine. Uh, it can also affect the lateral geniculate nucleus or excuse me, the, the lateral geniculate bodies, and uh, I think that's a part of the of the thymus, as well as the internal and external capsules, which are really crucial white matter strands uh, deep in the brain. And if it affects other organs, or excuse me, other parts of the brain besides the pons, it's caused osmo It's called osmotic myelinolysis. This has been a summary of five diseases that cause demyelination. I hope this review was helpful.